Hello everyone, welcome to episode 8. Uh, today's episode is about uh, establishing clinical registries uh, and we will talk this topic with Professor Fikri Abizidan again. Prof, welcome. And uh, we want to hear your experiences about uh, establishing clinical registries. Uh, thank you, Arif, again. Uh, I think this is a very important and a hot topic, by the way because it's not only relevant to my area of expertise, which is surgery, it's relevant to many people. Like for example, in emergency medicine, people like to make a registry for stroke, they want to make a registry for uh, myocardial infection, thrombolysis, and of course in our area, like trauma registries, uh, uh, abdominal compartment syndrome registries, whatever it is. I mean, registries are very useful but also they have limitations. The students have to understand, and the PhD students, or anyone who wants to establish a registry, that the aim of the registry is to collect large amount that of information that's properly collected, which is, means that tries to capture the information that we later on can go and explore. So that's different from an experimental study or a clinical study in which you collect data to answer a specific question for a limited time. Ideally, registries should continue, but in reality, it costs a lot of money. And that's why people may make a registry for a limited time, which is useful. And uh, I'll speak about the requirements to do a registry. Uh, Establishing a registry is actually a team work. It's not a single person work, so it may not be so much relevant to students, but they can in the future, if they are planning to be, let's say, a trauma surgeon, uh, or uh, let's say uh, a, neuro, a, neuro, a neurologist, they, it's, it's very useful to establish a registry for different reasons. The most important one is you can collect data on your area of expertise, so it can reflect on your quality of, of, of practice. It can make quality assurance studies. It can actually tell you what's your outcome. It can show you the key performer indicators, for example, in trauma. What is the time from coming to the emergency room to the theater in a bleeding patient? What is the time from coming to the room to the CT scan? These are can be collected in a big registry. Now you have to understand that registries, most of the time, are not used for research. And research is the highest level. So people may reach a standard which is suitable for other reasons, like quality assurance, like accreditation. Many people want to register just for accreditation. But from our own experience, if you, if you re-aim high by doing research in a high level, using it to research, it will suffice for everything. Why is this point important? Let's say you want a registry for reporting. The build up of the registry, electronic one, will be built on queries. So you have specific queries, let's say 10 queries, 50 queries, 100 queries, whatever you like. And with one click at one time, you will get the diagram of what's the number of males, what's the number of females, what's... That's not research per se. That is actually, you can take this data and report it as a whole, but research usually in the registries is post hoc research questions. So. What is post-hoc research question? That you collect the data and then you generate the research question. And in the ethics, we actually discussed what we call the Salami publication. And that's not Salami publication. There is continuous increase of the number of the subjects. There is complete differences of the research questions. And you are actually, as if you have been the hospital records, the hospital records may not be accurate as a registry. You like to have the registry so you can control the data and then you can at any time go back and answer to the questions. Now, what does that mean? That means, and this is from our experience, don't expect to get anything from a registry before three, three, four years. We started our registry, actually after six years, we started our registry working, trying to establish a registry. We, it took us two years to, re, to establish a registry. 
and then four years to collect that. And our first paper was after six years. So, of course, you can, the, the, the registry, you can use a commercial available registry. For example, you can go and use the American College of Surgeon registry. But for being in a developed country, I really advise people to establish registries from the scratch and using simple facilities. For example, there are different types of registers. Of course, the registry can be online registry or can be simple access to the computer, and each of them has specific criteria. So you have to tailor to the registry to your needs, and you have to establish a group with a leader, and you have to calculate the manpower to reach this uh, project, and you have to get funding to run this, and you should have a clear vision what will happen after a few years how can I use this registry? And there should be a lot of regulations. For example, the registry should be controlled by a committee, which tell people and gives permission to people to uh, access the data on a specific point of time. The other thing is that, of course, registries can be used to make excellent reports about mortality, etc., and it can also be useful for administrative people to use the registry for their uh, benefit to improve their hospital. The other thing we found registries useful for Arif is that registries can tell you what is the needed number of beds, let's say in the ICU for trauma. You can calculate exactly whether I need the number of beds, how many beds, so it's very good for planning. But it's a tedious work and the, the principle of it is that I want to collect data, then if I want to collect data, you ask yourself the simple questions, who will collect data? and and accordingly, he should be a trained person because we know that uh, if, if the quality of any report depends on the quality of the data which is entered there. So you have to train the people. And we have been actually ourselves made mistakes to realize that it's so important to train people because if you get someone to collect the data without proper training you and you check there is something wrong, you have to go back and check everything again. So you train the people. And then you have to decide what is the minimum data set. Don't collect a lot of information because your manpower will not be able to collect everything. And there is a specific formula for that. For example, the American College of Surgeons says for a trauma registry, for each 500 patients, you need one person to collect and enter the data for each 500. Now, the American College of Surgeons registry has more than 250 variables. We managed to reduce the data, minimum data set to 100 variables, including both prevention and management. And how did we select these variables from experience? We know these variables are not used, details are not used. So you reduce the minimum set of variables, which would depend on experience. Experienced people will tell you this is needed, this is not needed. And then we reduce it to 100, and believe me, when we, one person exactly will collect data of 1,000 patients. But this is a full time person, a trained person, a committed person. And then you have this data. Once you get the data, the data should be coded. And then from this coding, you can really go to to a lot of really answering questions, which we did. I think from our registry, we answered more than 40 questions and we are still answering more. Now, the, the issue is that, what is the quality of this data? Of course, we, I advise people to collect it prospectively because it will be type two data. Now, people say, I want to do a registry to do my cases, which I operated for, for let's say last 10 years. They can do that, but the quality of data will be much less and the missing data will be more, and then you cannot, the, the advantage of large data is that you can, you need less variables. For example, in epidemiological studies, you need less variables than in clinical studies. So registries are actually good to give you where are you going in general, not in clinical details. But how do we use the registries? Let's say you have a, a specific disease or something which is, in, which is uh, rare, like for example, uh, if you have blast injuries, which is not common, at least you can locate the patients by the registry and then go retrospectively to these files. 
But the registers are not meant to capture everything about all patients. You cannot do that. You just collect the, the minimum data set. And to select the minimum data set, you need an expert panel. And then this registry needs continuous funding. It needs auditing. Every time you regularly check the data, you see the people, see whether 15 files, revise them. If there are things you tell people, this is what you do. And even the form can be modified for some time before people accept them. And it took us seven years, Arif, seven years of hard work because we did three registries. We started one, we developed another one, and we developed the third one. We reduced the variables from 300 variables to only 100 variables uh, to have a specific form, minimum data set, train the people, collect the data, and then you have to find funds for them and see how much information you will get. Yeah. So that's a simple advice. And I don't advise, students will not be able to do a registry, you know, people only in their, like, uh, if so you are they, they can be part of the you know, team. They can be part of a team, but let's say, director of trauma center needs to make a big registry, a director of a, a neurological structure uh, unit may need to do that. But uh, just to, uh, to tell them, uh, I really advise the students, even to, students, to do small, precise studies that will teach them the research process much easier. The other thing I have, publishing from registries is much, much more difficult than publishing. Really? Why? Oh, yeah, because the data is more, the, the question is post hoc. Mm -hmm. And usually you may not all the variables to answer you. And, and, and uh, we notice either there is missing data and you have to know how to deal it. Sometimes you don't capture the variables which are actually important to answer that question, all of them. And uh, I don't want to go to statistics again, but there is something called modeling. And uh, one variable of the modeling is called the R square. So if you have high R square, this means that you have picked the important variables. If you have a low R square, this means, although it's significant, this factor is important in this outcome, but there are other factors that you did not put. So. Uh, it's, it's a great, uh, uh, yani, the, the thing about registries is that you have to wait a long time till your tree is big. It's like a tree. And then when it starts fruits, then you start picking. You need, I, I mean, I personally, I mean, uh, for a database, if you want to establish it, it took, for example, for me to, to start, took me uh, two years, but for, the, for Abu Dhabi in general to accept the principle, we came here 2000, uh, ours was started 2003. It was starting in the whole state 2013. So of course this varies from country to country, but you should have the persistence and consistency to continue. And of course, registers are very important for injury prevention, for quality assurance, for research, for training young people. A young person comes to you, oh, no problem, come, and then you give him a project. So it's really useful. And uh, it's a great thing, but it has to be done well, or otherwise you don't, uh, it's like a big project, and it's a big project, big company. I prefer to think small and grow. I mean, we started small and then we grew. Otherwise, it can really disappoint a lot of people if it doesn't work. And people try to do it with their principles, and I've seen some, and they were really, really disappointed. I know that about some registries been collecting for 10 years, they didn't publish a single paper from it. I know that some of them. I know very strong registries, even in Australia and, 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 uh, the, they are, and Europe, they approached me. They have a huge amount of data, but they really they are not trained to, 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 to uh, publish or not go, they don't publish too much as our group because they are not trained in research, which is understandable. So uh, registries are good if they are used properly and planned properly. And students at this stage, it's too early for them to start registers. I think they can hook to someone. No, actually, we don't expect them to start a registry, but at least, you know, they can be part of the registries or the groups that who of are course, using the yeah, registries yeah. and they can, you know, yeah. involve with the research somehow. Yeah, and I think I can uh, advise them. There is a very nice uh, review article written in the Surgical Clinics of North America. It was published, I think, in 1999 or 1995. And it's a beautiful resource. They, they can go through all the steps. What is this all about? Uh, it's all about how to establish a registry. Yeah. It's, a, it's a science and art at the same right. time. Right. 
All right, Prof, thank you very much. Uh, so hope to see you in the other sessions. Thank you very much, Ari. Oh, nice I am really enjoying this now. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, I was reluctant at the beginning, I thought, but I, once I look to the... Uh, Episodes uh, one by one, one it's coming. Yeah, it's coming now. I mean, it's really uh, simple and there, I, there's no preparation for it. I'm just... <laughs> It's Very like a, it's like an office visit, Arif, which is which is great. I like great. the idea. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nice the pleasure, Arif, for the pleasure. Thank you very much.